Today we bring an interesting topic where we predict the changes Conservative Party will bring after they win the election in 2025 and how it will affect Canadians. Considering general political trends, we anticipate from the predictive polls that Pierre is leading in the PM race. Recent polls indicate that Pierre Poilievre, the leader of the Conservative Party, is currently in the lead, making it increasingly probable that he will be Canada's next Prime Minister. During a recent live event, he outlined several issues he plans to address and actions he intends to take once in office, and some of these are detailed on your screen. While the outcome of the next election remains uncertain, I am inclined to anticipate Pierre Poilier assuming the role of the next Prime Minister. There is a link somewhere on the screen for the video. Please watch his campaign promises. With this expectation in mind, I am exploring the potential changes that ordinary citizens may observe once he takes office. Let's delve into these anticipated developments. If he wins, here are some potential implications of changes in Canada's political landscape, both domestically and internationally, on the people of Canada. 1. Domestic policy changes. Changes in the political landscape may lead to shifts in domestic policies. New government priorities or changes in leadership can result in alterations to healthcare, education, taxation, and social programs that directly affect the daily lives of Canadians. Policy changes could impact various aspects of life, including healthcare access and quality, education funding, job opportunities, housing affordability, and social welfare programs. Some people might not be happy with social and welfare programs changing for them, but overall this will be a positive in my opinion. Two, economic implications. Changes in government policies may have implications for the economy, influencing areas such as taxation, business regulations, and trade agreements. Alterations to economic policies can affect job availability, business growth, and overall economic stability, which can directly impact the livelihoods of Canadians. Shifts in trade agreements and international economic relations could affect industries and businesses reliant on international markets, potentially impacting employment and economic growth in specific sectors. Justin Trudeau's scandals summarized in this video link on the screen, wherein there are many examples of government interference in justice, corruption, truckers' protest, parents' protest, many ethics corruption violations and above all the debt he has put on the Canadians by borrowing huge, way larger than normal, money for government spending which eventually Canadians will have to pay through inflation, housing food groceries prices, no doubt about that. There are positives of spending money if it is invested in infrastructure, technology and growth for the country but not handouts and scandals which is what is currently happening. If Pierre becomes the Prime Minister he may not be able to fix much. Because the debt and economy is broken beyond the recovery point. If Pierre did all the right things, still it will be a very slow recovery in my opinion. There is no magic formula. I think it will take a decade to undo the damage Trudeau has caused this far. Therefore, this is a positive step in the right direction. But impact will not be visible right away. Three, foreign relations. On the international front, changes in political leadership can influence Canada's foreign relations, trade agreements, and diplomatic initiatives. This may have implications for international trade, security, and cooperation on global issues. We all know Canada was ignored out of a few international group in last decade because of the current government policies and actions. Changes in Canada's foreign policy can affect Canadians through trade relationships, security concerns, and the country's international reputation including diplomatic ties, trade partnerships, foreign investments and participation in global initiatives. Shifts in foreign policy could affect Canada's role in international organizations and its involvement in global issues. It could have both positive and negative implications for the Canadian economy and its people. For example, the aid to Ukraine is like throwing good money after bad money, totaling over $10 billion. This has contributed to crippling Canada's economy on top of all the bad decisions Trudeau government has made. And I am not sure if it benefited Canada in any way. This aid is for a social cause only. So, balancing between socialist ideologies and internal affairs and economy is going to be a key fundamental aspect. Pierre has publicly denounced Trudeau for ruining foreign relations with many countries, and vowed to re-establish good foreign relationships and promote trade and business. This will be a big positive for Canada. This will help recover the damaged economy.
4. Social and cultural policies. Alterations in the political landscape can result in shifts in social and cultural policies, including those related to diversity, immigration, and human rights. These changes can impact the way people of different backgrounds are treated and integrated into Canadian society, potentially leading to shifts in public discourse and societal values. Too many immigrants without the infrastructure for support is one of the issues we have been discussing for over a year now. We expect that Conservative government will make adjustments to immigration policies and multiculturalism initiatives which could impact the integration of newcomers into Canadian society and influence the dynamics of cultural diversity within the country. For Canada, I think this is neither positive nor negative. Pro and cons will just balance out. Five, climate and environmental policies. Environmental policies and climate change initiatives are significant concerns for Canadians. Political changes can influence the approach to environmental protection, energy transition, and sustainability. This can impact the environment and the quality of life in Canada. One thing you can expect for sure is the abolishment of unnecessary carbon tax and more investments in technologies in green energy field. Selectively applying carbon tax is quite literally baffling the Canadians, and we all know that carbon tax is not working. It needs a serious review, and Pierre has been saying the right things so far. But can he walk the talk? It is to be seen. Canadians may see changes in environmental regulations, investments in renewable energy, and efforts to combat climate change which could affect the long-term health and well-being of the nation. In my opinion, this will be big positive for Canadians if Pierre to become Prime Minister. 5. To understand the specific implications of the political landscape in 2023, we will continue to stay informed about policy developments and bring the potential effects of political changes on your daily lives and the future of this country. What are your thoughts? Please let us know in the comments. In the last 300 years of world history, there have been, th there have been 750 currencies and almost all of them have vanished, and almost all of them for the same reason. Prime ministers, presidents, kings, queens, emperors created cash to fund their lavish spending, debauching the currencies and forcing people to look for other ways to pay their bills. And that is precisely what is happening right now. Central bank money printing backstopping Justin Trudeau's irresponsible spending. Our common sense plan is to do exactly the opposite. We're going to cut waste and cap spending to get rid of the, inf the deficits that have necessitated the money printing in the first place. Here's how we'll do it. One, we'll root out waste. We'll start by getting rid of the $54 million Rivecan app. <laughs> the police are investigating it. You hear that? Justin Trudeau won't say if he'll cooperate with the cops this time. But they're investigating after he spent 50 more, 4 million of your dollars on an app that didn't work, that we didn't need, that violated your rights and could have been designed for about 50 grand. As a lark, two IT workers in Ottawa bought a few boxes of pizza and cases of beer. And as a joke, they redesigned the ArriveCan app from scratch in a weekend. And it didn't cost $54 million. My plan is to take that app that they designed, send it to Trudeau, and call it the Resign Can app. 